Hello, everyone. Welcome back to JSA TV and JSA Podcast. Uh, we are here with Karen Petersburg of Powerhouse Data Centers. Uh, we, uh, you're back on JSA TV. We interviewed you recently, uh, a few months ago. So we're going to get an update for all of our viewers about what's going on over at Powerhouse. Uh, we are live here at beautiful um, Honolulu, Hawaii for PTC 24. Very happy to be here. So just tell us a little. I know this is your first time at the event, right? Um, so tell us a little bit about how it's going, what you're excited about. Yeah, well, it's obviously a beautiful venue you the amazing amazing hotel um, but we've had some really really good meetings with some clients and customers and just had a great time right now networking and getting getting our name out there making sure people understand what's coming up and what we're doing and, and what we're all about so it's been really really good so far excellent excellent we love to hear that so I know you powerhouse has some big projects up your sleeve right now yes. so can you uh, tell us a little bit about the upcoming build sure sure well so we've got a, a huge amount of projects in the pipeline but we're not really socializing them all but um, here at PT see we are kind of talking about four of them um, a couple of them I'm actually in charge of the development on so this is a couple we've got a 49 acre campus in Reno so that's a really exciting project for us uh, we already have bridging power ready to go in 2025 so nice. it's a powered land play um, enough to put a first building up and then it can be expandable up to 300 megawatts so it's pretty exciting and trick the tri reno area is really favorable for data center builds and great tax benefits and things like that so mm -hmm. we're super excited obviously it's my build so i'm really excited <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one is charlotte which is a 129 acre campus so that's a really big one we could probably get about 500 megawatts out of that one mm -hmm. so we're super excited working with duke getting the power set up and then just right down from Ashburn, we have the new Nova. I don't mm -hmm. know if everybody's aware of that, but the new Nova is getting expanded down to 95. So Spotsylvania County, we have a huge 800 megawatt uh, land play there. Mm -hmm. um, we've already purchased the transformers for the first two. Um, so we're super excited and it's going to be a really great one for us. So. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. So mm -hmm. much going on over there at yeah. Powerhouse. Yes. Uh, lots of lots of demand and you all are, are keeping up with it. Um, right. So And also you all focus uh, on some major hyperscale yes. um, builds. So um, can you talk a little, about, a little bit about your approach to that when it comes sure. to new projects in that vein, challenges, you know, what you right. look at there? Of course. Yeah, we do focus on hyperscalers. Um, mm -hmm their business model and what they're trying to do really works well for what we are trying to do. And so we, we, primarily do a powered shell mm -hmm. and so it plays in well with what our hyperscale customers need and and so we have to really build these great relationships with them because as technology changes and evolves so does the design which translates into the type of the building that we actually have to put out in the pro forma on the development and so it's really important to build those relationships the PTC is a great example of, of one way of being able to do that and it's been really good for us so far and um, but obviously with large scale campuses there are challenges right there's mm -hmm. a huge amount of capital outlay that goes into getting the power ready to go so that when we do say that we have land there's power there and mm -hmm. that that's a big capital outlay so you know having that in the bank is is tough so having those good investment partners to to help us land those deals is really great so, Excellent. Yeah. yeah, it's one of the common threads we talk about a lot on JSA <laughs> TV, the power of partnership yes. as the digital infrastructure industry yeah. tries to keep up with the amazing growth that's happening. Exactly. Um, so just to divert a little bit sure. into a slightly different topic. So I know you're involved in some community initiatives. Yeah. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about what you've got going on there? Sure. Yeah, I'm involved with a lot of different organizations. I'm primarily focused on education and mm -hmm. STEM. You know, it's, it's, as everybody is aware, like, our workforce is diminishing. We have a huge demand. And so there's a big gap there, a talent gap that we're trying to solve for. And a lot of times you think about STEM, you think about computer science, you think about coding, you don't think about some of these other ancillary things that we do to support the data center industry as a whole. And a lot of those has to do with the operation of the data centers and the techno the technologists or the technology, yeah, the people who work on <laughs> on the equipment that service the equipment um, they're the kind of they're the highest demand and so you know it's really hard to bridge that gap and, and get those people interested in those types of things when you have these sexy things like AI and machine learning out there right yeah. so um, it's really finding those organizations that are focused on on de demystifying the um, the data center industry and getting the education out to the masses so Nomad Futurist Foundation is doing an incredible mm -hmm. job there there's other organizations too and you know when you think about STEM, you think, 
you know, primarily male dominated. It's Mm -hmm. still a male dominated industry, but women are making huge strides. And it's really important to get to the youth at a young, young age and and talk to them and let them know, you know, talk to your kids. It's really up to us to talk to your kids, let them know what the data center industry is about and what we what we're trying to do here there's so much opportunity but until we tell our children and let them know that you know it's okay it's cool to be in stem right it's Mm. cool to be a geek right not many people get that but (laughs) but, you know it is cool you don't have to go to home ec you can go to shop and it's perfectly fine Mm. and you're going to have a great career and it's really lucrative so it's it's finding those organizations like women tech forum wimco women in mission critical organizations part of seven by 24 these women support networks you can see them around here they're growing it's so important to help your fellow women support them help them throughout the industry and just build that network that way and and if we do that and everybody's working together and you talk to your kids you know we can really start publicizing what this industry is about and educating the public it's so important to keep the talent pool coming in you know yeah absolutely i think we're seeing we're seeing the importance of that right now yes. and uh yeah I, I you know i'm a huge fan of women supporting women and everyone supporting women and in, in tech and stem so thank you so much for the you're important welcome. work that you're doing there and thank you for joining us today oh, karen thanks for having me yeah we always love having you on jsa tv and thank you to the jsa TV viewers who are hanging out with us as we're coming at you live from PTC 24. Happy networking.